Joey Barton has had a busy few days on X. Over the course of about 50 tweets, he has compared female football pundits to serial killers, accused ITV of protecting an alleged nonce, called Gary Neville out for hypocrisy, and threatened to go trans. I'm gonna get into all of this and give you my own take in this video. So before you decide it's shit and click off, at least check out this cool animation. <laughs> Joey Barton has always been a massively divisive figure. On the one hand, we all love a bad boy, a troublemaker. On the other, we all hate those people who go on holidays and speak broken English in a foreign accent. Concentrate on stupid little uh, incidents like this. Well, love him or loathe him, he has dropped a nuclear bomb on the sports world by accusing female football pundits of being shit. 19 goals in 40 appearances. You know, do the math on that. It's, it's one, one goal a game. They've just lost three on the bounce. And if they'd have lost today, that would have been four, and that would have been, I think, their worst run since 19-something-something. Something. Cardiff have got a player called Dimitrios Gutank, and I think he's the ultimate Halloween player. He's been playing out from the back, pulling the tricks here and there, lots of skill to get out of the way, and Gutas in German means treat. Trick and treat. So yes, a lot of female football pundits are quite shit. But what Joey is forgetting is that they're not hired to be good. They're hired to be there. Joey Barton has this stone age mentality when all society cared about was reaching the pinnacle of human potential. Just hire the best man or woman or non-binary for the job of defusing the bomb placed by a terrorist group in a children's crash, he would say. What he fails to understand, however, is that we as a society society have decided that hiring on merit alone, that taking race and sex out of the equation, is actually racist and sexist. And thus, the beauty of the diversity hire was born. And in roles, the black disabled trans lady to defuse the bomb, but her wheelchair can't fit through the door, and little Timmy's dead, and little Susie's brains are on her mother's chiffon scarf. Okay, okay, okay. But what is the drawback in football terms? Well, as a fan, you still have to pay for Sky Sports. It's not free. Until the inevitable communist utopia is fully in place, that is. And paying for stuff that has been deliberately made slightly shitter to make one Asian non-binary lady pundit with a beard feel better is a bit like somebody stealing from you and donating the proceeds to charity. It's a bit annoying. By the way, I liked Robin Hood as a kid, but as I grow older, I, I think he's a real wanker. Here's Nobbs, takes aim, right down the keeper's throat. In another of Joey's tweets, he says, I'm that lone wolf that doesn't need your money, that you can't cancel. The implication is that he expects to lose out financially because of his views. He might be right. Matt Letizier had diverged from the party line regarding COVID right before he was let go from his job at Sky Sports. Trevor Sinclair was suspended from TalkSport after criticizing the Queen. Should we really lose our jobs because of our personal views? You know, well, some people would say that whilst I believe in freedom of speech, which I know you do, it doesn't come with freedom of consequence. The counter argument to that is that a job is the thing we obtain to have money. Money is the thing we obtain to have food. Food is the thing we obtain to have life. And life is, of course, the thing we sustain not to be dead. And even Kim Jong-un would consider the death penalty for opening your mouth a little bit harsh. According to Joey's poll on his ex account, 47% of people do not want ex-woman footballers commentating on the men's game. I find that surprising and a bit archaic. A social scientist could argue that a woman's voice triggers men who use football as an escape from being nagged by their wives all day. You know, for the woke among you, in academic terms. Men need a safe space from the matriarchal tradition of verbal domestic abuse, which had stripped them of their autonomy since the moment they entered the hegemonic marital structure. This might also be why they play a sport as shit as golf, because women aren't interested, and it takes ages to finish a game. I'm a big Forden fan. Imagine Trent and Forden in them two number 10 positions. You know, another problem with having women on a panel is that when men are left alone in a sex segregated space, they instinctively become rough, inappropriate, offensive, impolite and drunk, which is far more entertaining for the consumer, let's face it. Exhibit A, the greatest punditry panel of all time. Eamon Dunphy, John Giles, Liam Brady, and of course the late Bill O'Hurley. Here are some highlights, or lowlights depending on your politics, from the all-male lineup. And I'm not gonna listen to him being called a tug by you. I don't, don't want to hear what- When Mayweather was shaking up take that penalty, I thought he, yeah. he was fucking dreadless. Rob Little. 
He's yeah, the guy. Exactly the guy. Who ran away and left his wife for a young one. Ah, uh, Emma, come on. No, that's all that's the border, that kind of stuff. This would simply never happen if a woman was there. Because like all men, the lads have naturally become more decent and considerate in a woman's presence. Even in a room of a hundred men, one woman's presence makes the dynamic more civilized and more boring. By the way, for any woman considering breaking down gender barriers by entering the police force, you won't be receiving this courtesy from junkies and hardened criminals. They tend not to give a shit and are fully committed to equal rights and lefts, regardless of gender. There are many people in favor of wokeness in football. After calling any Aluko and Lucy Ward the Fred and Rose West of football commentary, ITV described Joey's comments as shameful and contemptible. Joey responded, pointing out that what is shameful and contemptible is ITV allegedly covering up Philip Schofield, allegedly grooming and bumming an underage boy. I consider that a low blow from Joey. And yes, what Philip Schofield allegedly did is the epitome of a low blow. But Joey's must be the lowest of blows since... 19 something something. Joey later clarified that Enya Luko is actually more like Joseph Stalin because her terrible football commentary has murdered the ears of millions of football fans around the world. Gary Neville, never shy to speak up, also thought Joey had gone too far, tweeting about the terrible sexism his female family members had experienced in football. He didn't care when he took a truckload of money to work at the Guitar World Cup. He didn't care when he said nothing about his friend being accused of domestic violence, and he doesn't care now. Joey claims that he knows female pundits who've slept with football players and violated marriages to advance their careers. He's also threatened to commit to a course of oestrogen, keep her penis and balls, and compete in the woman's game, forecasting a hundred goal debut season. In a sense, it comes at an ideal time because of course US boxing have just allowed trans women to compete against regular women, so maybe a charity match between Joey and one of these female pundits might be on the cards. I think Joey's tirade on social media is a symptom of a society that has been guilt tripped and gaslit for a bit too long. It's not enough to be not racist, you have to be anti-racist. White footballers must take the knee for black rights. Straight footballers must wear gay armbands. Northern Irish Catholic footballers must wear the poppy. And I know, James McLean didn't wear the poppy. Only because whoever militant and aggressive the woke brigade might be in England, there are far more militant and aggressive people people where he's from in London, Derry. I mean Derry. I meant Derry. In Derry. He's from Derry. Anyway guys, that was my video on Joey Barton nuking wokeness in sports and my thought on the matter. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel if you can. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Thanks.